Epcot is a massive park holding massive amounts of super amazing things. So what's the problem here? The problem is that many of those amazing things you've never even heard about, putting you at risk of missing them completely during your next Epcot vacation, which is why we are here and why you are here to watch this video today. Can't wait to share them with you. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we are ready and eager as ever to hit you with so many amazing Epcot things that have been hiding in the shadows for way too long. It's time to jump right in because this is going to be a long video, y'all. We're going to start with Walt's childhood bedroom. Yes, I am talking about the real Walt Disney his bedroom from when he was a kid. We are not being transported to Marceline, Missouri, but you can still see a blast from Walt's past over at the Land Pavilion during your next visit. On the Living with the Land boat ride, you're gonna pass a cozy scene with a cute little farmhouse. Upstairs in that farmhouse is a bedroom designed to look like the very one from Walt Disney's childhood home. You're gonna notice a lamp that looks a lot like the one in Walt's Disneyland apartment, and the lamp is always left on in this room in honor of his memory. Now, it's kinda of hard to see all this detail from down below on the boat, because it's actually on the back of the house. You can get a much better view of it when you dine at the Garden Grill restaurant located on the second floor. This is another great reason to go to the Garden Grill, my friends, because it's very hard to see this if you're not there. Now, Epcot, as you know, takes their drinking around the world very seriously, but only the elite know where to track down the hidden champagne bar during their spirited adventures. Head into the France Pavilion to find Le Vins de France. Now, this bar isn't to be confused with Le Vins de Chefs de France, our little green kiosk outside the pavilion that serves some of our favorite drinks like the Grey Goose Slush and the Grand Marnier Slush, though you probably want to pay that one a visit too if you don't know about those. But Le Vins de France is completely different, hidden away inside the gift shop that's right across from La Artisan de Glace. In this shop, you can buy bottles of wine and champagne to take home, but you can also buy wine and champagne by the glass to sip and savor. But what makes this place extra special and unique is their champagne flights. There are currently two flights offered. Each includes three different types of champagne with two ounce pours. The regular flight with a more standard array of options is around $34. The deluxe champagne flight with higher end options is around 73. It's a splurge, but it may be a fun thing to do as part of a celebration. Now, in order to see this Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind secret, you're going to have to enter into the queue and look up at the exact right time. As the supercomputer strives to learn more about Terran culture in the Galaxarium, it questions the fascination humans have with the turkey leg. The computer asks, why only the leg? What about the rest of this creature? Look, supercomputer, I'm just as baffled as you are about these things, but DFB always loves a good classic snack reference, even if the snack is a super controversial one. Go ahead and look up and you'll see Xandar's hidden turkey leg. Now, I'm very, very sorry that we haven't told you about this sooner. Inside the Journey into Imagination with Figment Q, you can find a hidden Buzz Lightyear. Buzz is hiding out inside an open birdhouse-like structure near the floor, so you're, if you're not looking for him, he can be pretty hard to spot. By the way, I know this isn't about Epcot, but did you know about the hidden Figment in Disney California Adventure over in Disneyland Resort? That's really fun too. I think it's probably in one or more of our videos, so definitely check out our DCA videos if you're headed to Disneyland soon. All right, now yes, I talk about bathrooms a lot. Bathroom emergencies are no laughing matter, which is why I wanna track down as many convenient bathrooms for y'all as possible, including the newest, most hidden away ones. With that being said, let's add the newest private bathroom entry to our ongoing list, the bathroom inside Journey of Water inspired by Moana. Now, I remember when we first went through Journey of Water, and we found this bathroom. This is the thing that I put on my Instagram post as like the most important thing in Journey of Water, because to me, it kind of is. Anyway, you'll find this stop about halfway through the attraction just before you reach Tafiti. There's gonna be a sign for it pointing you in the right direction, so don't worry about missing it completely. The outside of the bathroom is pretty unremarkable, but when you open that simple door, you're gonna be transported into a single stall restroom that feels worthy of a seafarer like Moana. I know, it's weird to say a bathroom is beautiful, but it's beautiful. World Celebration has received a major glow up recently. 
literally. The World Celebration Gardens opened for guests on December 5th, giving us a new place to relax and charge up our phones, get a picture with the Walt the Dreamer statue, and appreciate the greenery of the area. But my absolute favorite part about this new section doesn't happen until the sun sets. You see, back in the day, Epcot used to have these glowing fiber optic pathways that disappeared when all the transformation construction started up. I remember running on these when I was a little kid. I have videos of my kid running on these. But now these glowing paths have returned in a different way. After sundown, 300 LED lights embedded in the pavement around World Celebration Gardens, as well as the towering light poles, illuminate this new space and synchronize with Spaceship Earth's points of light shows, which happen continuously throughout the night as well. I was honestly so moved when I first saw these because it did remind me of when I was a kid in Epcot. My dad used to love those twinkling sidewalks and we'd just spend hours with those. And so it was a really, I guess, nostalgic and poignant moment for me to see those light up sidewalks kind of back in a new way and just remember my dad because Epcot's kind of the park that we shared the most. So it was just really, was, I don't know, I love it. So I wanna make sure you know about it just in case you have the same sort of nostalgia as I do. Now, did you know that there's a secret English channel in Epcot? When you cross over from the France Pavilion to the UK Pavilion, you're gonna walk across a picturesque bridge that you might not think has a significant purpose other than getting you from point A to point B. But you would be wrong, because why would anything in Disney just have one purpose, right? This bridge actually represents crossing the English Channel between the two countries in real life, so it's actually a geography lesson and a footpath all in one. Makes you appreciate it a little bit more now, doesn't it? Now, there's a double feature happening at the Palais du Cinema inside the France Pavilion. In the middle of the day, you can come to this theater to watch the Beauty and the Beast sing-along, which retells the tale as old as time from LeFou's perspective, strangely enough, but bookending the day when the park first opens and when the park's only a couple hours away from closing, you can watch Impressions de France here instead, which is basically an 18-minute travelogue of the country, accompanied by a lovely soundtrack and soothing narration. Showtimes are liable to change, so make sure you refer to the My Disney Experience app for the updated times when you visit. But a lot of people don't realize there are actually two shows that happen in France. So when all the mini ears and spirit jerseys and munchlings across all the Disney gift shops are starting to give you a major sense of deja vu, start browsing the World Showcase for a palate cleanser, because the knickknacks you're going to find on these pavilion gift shop shelves are unique and exciting and unexpected. You can buy a replica samurai sword in the Mitsukoshi department store in Japan, your personal family crest in the Crown and Crest gift shop in the UK, customizable perfume in Plume et Palette in France, Venetian carnival masks in La Gemma Elegante in Italy, and $2,000 cuckoo clocks in Das Kaufhaus in Germany. And say it with me, so much more. Seriously, browsing the World Showcase shops is a big part of the Epcot experience, even if you don't wind up buying anything. So be sure to check them out. It's not just the same old, same old Disney merch in there. They've got really cool, unique stuff from those countries or artisan created. Definitely check them out. There's actually a way you can swim with the dolphins over in Epcot. We haven't talked about this in a long time on the channel. Many folks don't even realize it's an option. Epcot Seas Adventures Dolphins in Depth is a two-hour guided tour that features a 30-minute interaction with the dolphins in waist-deep water. Backstage views complete with the opportunity to learn about Disney World's dolphin care program and research sessions with marine mammal specialists sound like a ton of fun. This tour is a pretty steep asking price. It's $209 per guest on top of your regular theme park admission, but it does give you the chance to see a side of Epcot that most folks will never get the opportunity to see. Now, you don't need a scuba certification if you want to swim with the dolphins, but you do need one if you decide to try Epcot's other seas pavilion tour, Dive Quest. This truly unique experience gives you the opportunity to dive in Epcot's current free 5.7 million gallon saltwater aquarium, which is home to over 2,000 sea creatures, including sea turtles and reef fish, stingrays, and even sharks. This tour is pricier than the dolphin tour. It's $229 to $249 per person on top of your admission fee. But again, it's a completely unique experience that you can totally add to your bucket list. You can book either tour through the Disney World website or on the My Disney Experience app. 
Now the Canada Pavilion's beautiful cascading waterfall is more than just a photo op. These rushing waters not only represent the impressive waterfalls that you'll find in the actual country, but they also hide the appearance and noise of a huge generator situated directly behind it. Nicely done, Disney. When you step into the Fjording gift shop over in the Norway Pavilion, it's hard to miss the gigantic rock troll greeting you at the front entrance. Actually, it's impossible to miss unless you're moonwalking backwards into the store for some reason. He's literally right there. But this big guy is more than just a friendly and slightly intimidating face. He's actually got a pretty interesting backstory. This troll is known as the forgetful troll. According to Imagineering lore, he comes to life at night but then turns back to stone when the sun comes up. Because of this, he's very forgetful so he doesn't remember anything at all when he wakes up, including his name. It's like that one Adam Sandler movie, 50 First Dates, except instead of Drew Barrymore, you've got a big troll with a long nose and no romantic subplot. Once upon a time, the first families who rode Frozen Ever After in the park that day got to name the forgetful troll on his personal Instagram account. But unfortunately, as of late March 2023, it appears the ability to name the troll is no longer being offered. That being said, you can always give him a temporary name in your heart that he'll totally not remember. It's no secret that Spaceship Earth is a time capsule featuring technology that's definitely seen better days, but that doesn't mean the Project Tomorrow games, which you're gonna find at the ride's exit, aren't still a fun way to pass the time. Project Tomorrow has several virtual reality experiences where you can do things like power a community with digital hockey pucks, assemble body parts with a robotic arm, and embody Agent X to save a city from being destroyed. Sure, the technology is dated, but these games usually don't have massive amounts of people swarming around ready to play, making it a fun way to pass some time with the kids while steering clear of the crowds and the heat outside. And since we're on the subject of dated technology games at the exits of space-themed rides, let's talk about another one. After you take a ride on Mission Space, you can check out the Advanced Training Lab, an interactive area where you can do a few different galactic-themed activities, like crawl around in the space base play area for kids, play the Expedition Mars joystick video game, send a digital postcard to a friend back home, or compete against other space travelers in a high-energy rocket race. Again, this area isn't going to give you state-of-the-art technology to ogle, but it should be a nice blast from the past and a fun way to kill time when you're trying to hide away from a huge rainstorm or maybe just attempting to cool down from the heat. So Epcot is a big park. Knowing how to get around said park as efficiently as possible is pretty much a necessity at this point. For example, if you're traveling between the Mexico Pavilion and World Discovery, there's no need to walk all the way around by the main World Showcase entrance. There is a shortcut. You can cut through the Odyssey Pavilion. The Odyssey Pavilion is typically open during the festivals, but even if it's not a festival season, this has outdoor walkways that run right past it, connecting the test track area to the Mexico area. They also have really, really big bathrooms here and this is also where the baby care center and first aid can be found. Now if you're trying to get to world nature from the world showcase but you don't want to take the long way around, take the Rose Garden Trail instead. When you see the refreshment port kiosk right when you're coming out of the Canada Pavilion, take a left and cut past Journey into Imagination with Figment to get over to the World Nature area. Not only is this path shorter, but you'll also get to skip out on the main area of traffic that's going to be coming out of World Celebration. Another way to cut down on your steps during the day is to use Epcot's Friendship Boat Service. Many people don't know that Epcot runs daily boat service across the lagoon from the Mexico Pavilion to the Germany Pavilion and from the Canada Pavilion to the Morocco Pavilion. This shortcut is weather permitting and has limited hours during the day, but if you don't feel like walking all the way around to the other side of the park, it's a good hack that doubles as an easygoing ride. Now, we're still mourning the loss of Restaurant Marrakesh over in the Morocco Pavilion because it used to be a really awesome Mediterranean-inspired table service that's been temporarily unavailable ever since the pandemic closures. However, during the Food and Wine Festival these past few years, and only during the Food and Wine Festival, the former restaurant transforms into something completely different, an exclusive lounge. The Florida Blue Lounge is a solid spot to rest and relax during your World Showcase journey. There's lots of seating in the AC here, as well as multiple complimentary drinks like cold brew and tea, juice and sparkling beverages, and free henna sessions typically from noon to 5 p.m. The Florida Blue Lounge is free and available for all guests to use, but there is a catch. In order to use this lounge, you'll have to apply for messages and alerts from Florida Blue Medicare. That means when you sign up, you are consenting for them to use your email and phone number for marketing to you, which is why you must be at least 18 years old to sign up. So heads up on that. Also, let me emphasize this again. The lounge offering has only been available during past food and wine festivals, and we're not yet sure if it'll be available for this year's fest. 
especially since Communicor Hall and Plaza will hopefully be opening up in time for this Fest 2024 kickoff. But stick with us and we'll make sure to update you once we learn more closer to the time. Now, how many more hidden lounges can we find hiding out at Epcot? Let's see. If you're a DVC member, that's Disney Vacation Club, there's a DVC exclusive lounge hiding out in the Imagination Pavilion. This lounge is on the second floor of the Imageworks merchandise location, the one you go through after riding Journey into Imagination with Figment. At this lounge, you're going to find comfy seats, complimentary sodas, Wi-Fi, charging stations, a printer, and oh yeah, some much needed peace and quiet. There's also an exclusive lounge hanging out over at Test Track too, but the only people who get to use this one are General Motors employees and retirees. The entrance of the lounge is located to the right of the Test Track entrance, hidden behind a piece of blue wall. If you weren't specifically looking for it, you'd miss it entirely. It just looks like a regular old door upon first glance. Once you go through the door, you'll walk to the end of the hallway and press the buzzer near the elevator. Then a cast member will check your GM employee ID, which you must have in order to enter. Friends and family are also allowed to tag along with a GM employee to hang out and relax and grab a free soda. But the best part about this place, when you tell the cast member at the lounge that you're getting ready to head out, they'll give up to five free test track lightning lanes for your group to use that day. Hooray for employee perks. Now, I don't know if car shopping is really going to be on your mind when you're already spending thousands on an epic Disney vacation, but if it is, Epcot's ready for you. After you speed along the test track roads at Epcot, you'll exit through a showroom with some rather impressive looking Chevrolet vehicles. A couple of Chevy experts will be hanging around the area just in case you have any questions about what you see featured in the showroom that day. They'll be happy to answer whatever and point you in the direction of where you can purchase one of these sweet rides after your Disney World trip wraps up. Ever since Space 220 opened in 2021, it's been one of the hardest advanced dining reservations to snag, not just in Epcot, but in Disney World, period. Even the Space 220 Lounge now requires you to make advanced dining reservations due to its popularity, which also book up pretty quickly after they first go live 60 days before you visit. With that being said, it is possible to get into Space 220 without a dining room or lounge reservation and still experience this immersive restaurant. How? By checking on the walk-up bar availability that day. The Space 220 bar does not take any ADRs, nor does it have a virtual waitlist that you can join. Instead, you're going to have to go to the restaurant's host stand after the restaurant opens at 11.30 a.m. and add your name to the physical walk-up waitlist. Now, to clarify, the lounge takes dining reservations. The the restaurant takes dining reservations. The bar does not. This is just the bar that you sit at with like bar seating, you know? Now, here's a catch to this one. Bar seating is not available for guests who are under 21. So if you've got a younger member in your party, you'll want to stick with getting up early in the morning before those dining room and lounge reservations go live to snag your seats. Reservations drop daily on the My Disney Experience app and on the Disney World website at about 6 a.m. Eastern. Also keep in mind that bar seating is first come first serve, which is why we recommend checking on the status of things right when Space 220 opens instead of swinging by later on when the waitlist might already be booked up for the rest of the day. Many of Disney's expansion projects lately have included places with more USB and charging ports to help you juice up your phone during the day. Unfortunately, many of those charging locations only work if you've remembered to bring a charging cable. And I admit, I've definitely been guilty of not remembering to bring one more times than I can count. Thankfully, Epcot's got a solution for people like me who forget their cords or battery packs. The Connections Eatery Quick Service has several tables with wireless charging capabilities. When you're looking for a seat in the restaurant, Pay special attention to the long oval tables that seat eight or more people. They're typically overlooked by guests because they do feel like community seating, but don't you go and shy away from them too. In the middle of each of these tables is a raised shelf, and at each end of the shelf is a little phone charging logo. When you lay your phone on it just right, it'll wirelessly charge if your phone has that capability. So if you're running out of battery life, this can be a good temporary solution while you're eating your lunch or dinner or having a coffee. Just be aware that these charging stations are relatively slow at getting your phone juice up. So don't come here thinking this wireless table is going to get your phone back up to 100% again after just 20 minutes. Now here's a note. If you don't want to eat at Connections Eatery just to use one of their charging tables, which I wouldn't recommend, why would you spend a bunch of money to do something free? You can always hit up the New World Celebration Gardens area and juice up your phone there. While you won't find any wireless charging tables in these gardens, you will be able to use one of the several outdoor outlets available here without spending extra dimes to do so. Just remember to bring your charging cord. 
So this is a random secret, but I wanted to share it with you because that's what friends do. They share random secrets. If you ever find yourself wondering how the Rosencrown pub in the UK pavilion got its name, the story isn't all that intricate to unravel. The name is based on a survey of the British Isles, which found that the most common words used in pub names across the region were rose and crown. So Disney just mashed those together and the Rosencrown pub was born. Remember, you can still grab a drink from the pub here without making reservations for the main restaurant. So just belly up to the bar and pick your spirit to take with you. Speaking of drinks, let's take a speedy drinking around the world tour to try a few of the best international beverages that can be made alcoholic or non-alcoholic. This way, everyone can play along. In Morocco, you can pick up the virgin frozen mint tea at Oasis Sips and Sweets, or you can spike it with gin. In China, we love the tipsy ducks in love at the Joy of Tea kiosk for its name and its combination of bourbon, black tea, coffee, cream, and chocolate. You can also order it without the bourbon if you wish. And in Norway, the Kristoff Cafe at Kringla Bakery Odd Cafe is the non-alcoholic version of the Viking coffee made with frozen coffee, coffee chocolate sauce, and coffee chocolate crunch. So two of the most popular gift shops in Epcot give you the opportunity to check out items without having to stand in line to pay for them. Over at the flagship Creations Shop and Treasures of Xandar gift shop outside of Cosmic Rewind, you can purchase any souvenirs you find through your My Disney Experience app. It's called Mobile Checkout. To find the merchandise mobile checkout option on your app, open up your My Disney Experience and tap on the plus sign at the bottom center of the screen. Then select Merchandise Mobile Checkout from the provider options and follow the prompts from there. Just make sure you show your QR code receipt to a cast member at the front of the store before heading out. Why, of course you can find red British phone booths over in the UK pavilion. That seems like a given, right? But there's another red phone booth. This one's hiding out in the upper level of the Canada pavilion, and you can get a photo op with that one too. So if the UK pavilion phone booths are being bombarded with guests taking pictures, head into Canada for a quieter, less hectic, hidden photo op. You'll find the Canada phone booth right at the top of the stairs to your left. Stop the presses, y'all. You can find real live celebrities in Epcot all year round. All right, we've seen a lot of things change during Epcot's big multi-year transformation. New rides, new immersive experiences, new restaurants. But one of the newish things that gets overlooked here, because they're right up at the front of the park, are those Leave a Legacy monoliths that were moved around during the transformation. Back in the day, you used to be able to buy a spot on these monoliths to get your photos etched into one of the panels. As part of the Epcot transformation, though, the entrance was redesigned and the old Leave a Legacy monoliths were removed. But instead of getting rid of this important piece of park history, Epcot relocated and reimagined them. Now the photos are displayed on colorful new panels that match the hues of Epcot's new color palette. And get this, if you're looking for your picture or someone else's picture, among all these new Leave a Legacy tiles, you can use your phone or another smart device to scan the monolith's QR code. This is going to load up a little tile finder search feature to help you track down the coordinates for a specific tile location. But here's the really cool part about this. There are celebrity panels on the Leave a Legacy monoliths too. You can find members of NSYNC, the popular 90s boy band for all you youngins out there, as well as Ariana Grande's family. So try using the photo search feature to track these musical artists down during your next Epcot trip. So I know we already talked about champagne flights over in the France Pavilion, but Les Vins de France isn't the only place you can try multiple drink samples for one price. Here are a few other locations where you can pick up drink flights in Epcot. You can get an Imperial Sampler at Rose and Crown Pub in the UK Pavilion, which has nothing to do with the Death Star, and it'll give you four different beers for around 15 bucks. At Tutto Gusto Wine Cellar in the Italy Pavilion, you can order wine flights, which will give you three samples of wine for around $17. The Germany Pavilion has a couple of different flight options like wine flights in the wine color and a four pour German beer flight at the beer garden table service restaurant. This requires reservations, but the wine color does not. And I can never forget when I was first starting DFB and I found a flight of ice wine at the wine color and I was in my ice wine era and I was so, so excited to tell everybody about it. That was a blast. Anyway, that was a long time ago. But if you're visiting during an Epcot festival, lots of drink flights can be found across several of the outdoor food booths. And sometimes if you're, you might find some ice wine flights there as well. Oh, and for a non-boozy and totally free drink flight experience, factor in some time to visit Club Cool during your day to try a variety of international sodas for free. 
Now, Epcot's not going to let you go thirsty, that's for sure. While Spice Road Table over in the Morocco Pavilion is indeed a table service location, there's also an area tucked away just inside the restaurant's entrance where you can grab a Spice Road drink to go from the bar. No reservations necessary. And if you just need to hydrate, sometimes this area also has a really nice sort of carafe of ice water that you can use to grab a cup of water. Okay, in the middle of this video, I want to take a brief moment to say that if you're looking for an Epcot guide that goes over more of the park basics that you can also easily take into the park with you and refer back to as a cheat sheet, we got a free Epcot quick guide for you. It's already made up and ready to send your way. Just scan the QR code you see on the screen now or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Epcot after this to pick up your digital guide. Again, totally free. We'll just send it to your email. Okay, back to the amazingness. Now, I don't know if you've been keeping up with this soap opera over on the DFB website, but if you haven't, you should be. Right outside the Germany Pavilion, there is the most adorable German train town that appeals to my love and devotion for all things miniature. And you guys have seen the train town, right? If you haven't, it's been there for a very, very long time and it's really fun to go check out. But this train town does not stay the same. Things can get a little kooky in this otherwise charming miniature town. Without saying a thing, the tiny citizens of this village tell a story and we like to fill in the blanks ourselves. Like, see this little couple over here? What kind of breakup do you think they're going through right now? And what about this poor chap? You think he just got off mission space and is now regretting it terribly? Hold on a minute, is that a giant naked baby sitting on a park bench? Oh, giant baby, please spare us from your wrath. Okay, can you tell me a fun at our job? This is what we talk about all the time on our Slack channels. Anyway, this little train town village has lots of secrets and stories just waiting for you to unravel in whatever way you want to. But while you're creating said narratives in your head, don't forget to appreciate the little details of this town too, like the changing flags and decor that represent the latest Epcot festivals taking place. Now, there's a stigma that Epcot can't quite shake. Lots of people refer to it as, you know, the educational theme park of the Disney bubble, especially when it comes to the World Showcase. But over the years, more recognizable IP characters have been incorporated into several different pavilions to appeal to kids and adults alike. But the World Showcase is still mostly shopping, tasting unique food, and for some, drinking around the world. And all of that grown-up stuff can get super boring for some kids pretty fast. Also, please don't let your kids drink around the world unless it's mocktails. Anyway, to keep kids engaged with all the World Showcase has to offer, make sure to track down all the different Kid Caught Fun Stop stations located in each of the 11 pavilions. At these spots, kids can pick up takeout activity baggies containing fun facts and coloring cards. And the best part about Kid Caught, it's totally free. So I've got some secret rare Epcot fireworks for you to see. If you want to ring in the new year at Epcot, you can only catch Epcot's rare New Year's Eve fireworks display on December 31st. Unlike the New Year's Eve fireworks in Magic Kingdom, which run on December 30th as well. Just like Luminous, the fireworks are shot off over at World Showcase Lagoon, but not before a big countdown to the new year takes place. And don't be so dazzled by the fireworks display that you miss out on the other exclusive New Year's offerings happening around the pavilions leading up to the main event. While entertainment can vary, we often see a silent disco in the UK pavilion, live entertainment in Italy, Chinese lion dancers in the China pavilion, and a lot more. There's so much going on. Now, New Year's Eve at Epcot is an ultra busy time for the park, but if you're looking for a night of limited time entertainment and high energy celebration, this is the place to be when the countdown begins. All right, Disney Visa card holders, this exclusive Epcot perk is for you. You can find a Disney Visa exclusive character meet and greet spot near the Journey into Imagination Pavilion on the left hand side, right past the Disney and Pixar short film festival. Unlike the test track lounge for GM employees, where the door is very nondescript, this meet and greet location is hard to miss once you've found the door because it'll have a huge sign that says photo spot right above the entrance. You will need your Disney Visa card in order to enter, but once you show your card to the cast member up front, you'll be led to a private meet and greet location where characters like Mickey and Minnie, Pluto and Goofy are ready to say hello and take pictures. And guess what else? All the photos you take here are free to download. Keep in mind that the hours for this photo spot can be limited, typically ranging from 1 to 6.30 p.m., so don't miss out on your window of opportunity. So Via Napoli over in the Italy Pavilion is one of the best places to order pizza on Disney property. And that's because this pizza place doesn't cut corners. 
To make sure the pizza here is as authentically Italian as possible, the water used to make the pizza dough is even sourced from a spring similar to Italy's Campania region, according to the Disney World website. Not only that, but when your pizza is ready to be cooked, it'll be placed in one of three wood-burning ovens, each of which are named after the three active volcanoes in Italy, Mount Etna, Mount Vesuvius, and Stromboli. There's a little Pinocchio reference for all of us mega Disney nerds. So the Katsura Grill Quick Service over in the Japan Pavilion may not be your number one choice when it comes to Epcot restaurants, but whether you decide to dine here or not, you're going to want to stroll around its outdoor patio. The patio overlooks a serene stroll garden with a soothing waterfall, hanging paper lanterns, and an intricate rock display. A lot of people don't even know this is back here, and it's such a great place to escape. And if you continue strolling across the little bridge here, you're going to wind up by the Koi Pond, which is equally as peaceful and lovely as the rest of the area. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, you'll also find a quiet bathroom pretty close to this area too. Leave it to me to come in clutch when it comes to the important stuff. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is that newest coaster in Epcot that opened back in May 2022. Well, I think it's the only coaster in Epcot, but it is very new as well. Since then, it's quickly become the most popular and most coveted ride in the entire park, and to be fair, potentially the entire Walt Disney World Resort. Normally, you can only ride this coaster by joining the virtual queue on your My Disney Experience app at either 7 a.m. or 1 p.m. or maybe that 6 p.m. one, or by purchasing an individual lightning lane for it. Otherwise, there's no regular standby queue available per the release of this video. Except that's not exactly true because a standby queue does actually open up for this ride on rare occasions. And by rare occasions, I mean during Epcot's After Hours events. This year, Epcot has After Hours events on select nights from February 2nd through July 18th. So they are happening now, y'all. One of the best parts about these events is that capacity is super limited, meaning the wait times for the rides are going to be really low or even non-existent, which is why Cosmic Rewind is able to switch over to a standby wait during this time. The Epcot After Hours events in 2024 take place from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. However, with just your After Hours ticket, you'll be able to enter the park as early as 7 for a pre-party mix-in. You just won't be able to enter the Cosmic Rewind standby queue until the event officially kicks off at 10. Okay, hi, I want to take a minute to appreciate the pickle ornaments over at Germany's Christmas Corner gift shop. I'm not going to try to say it in German because I will embarrass myself and you will get upset. Now, this little Christmas shop stays open all year round to give you a hearty dose of international holiday cheer no matter when you decide to visit. And while you'll be able to find lots of different ornaments decorating the trees inside this shop, the most prominent of them all isn't candy cane shaped or gingerbread shaped or even pretzel shaped, it is pickle shaped. So what's the deal with all the pickles? Well, according to German tradition, this is the last ornament that gets placed on the tree once the kids go to bed. In the morning, after Saint Nick drops off all his presents for the good little children of the world, the first kiddo to find the pickle ornament in the tree will receive an extra gift from the jolly old elf himself. And you too can make this a tradition in your household starting next Christmas by purchasing one of these quirky, shiny pickle dudes during your Epcot day. So while Epcot typically opens at 9 a.m., that doesn't mean the entire park opens at 9 a.m. Actually, most of the World Showcase doesn't actually open until 11 a.m. The only parts of the World Showcase that do open at 9, or earlier if you're using early theme park entry, are the pavilion rides, Frozen Ever After, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, and Grand Fiesta Tour, as well as a few restaurants with breakfast offerings like Kringle Bakery Odd Cafe and Leal Boulangerie Patisserie. Other than that, you're gonna have to wait for the other World Showcase rides, restaurants, and festival booths to open up at 11. So there are two types of Epcot dining packages available for you to book before your visit that are gonna make it easier to see some of the special events happening at Epcot on your Epcot day. The first is the fireworks dining package. This offers you a meal at a participating Epcot restaurant along with a great view of the luminous nighttime spectacular. It happens at Rose and Crown and Spice Road Table. And the second is the festival dining packages. Again, you're gonna receive a meal at a participating Epcot restaurant, but along with that meal, you'll also get a guaranteed priority seating spot for an evening festival show at the America Gardens Theater on the same date. Shows vary depending on what festival is happening and who's on the schedule to perform that day, but you can always check on those updated performance schedules via the Disney World website, and of course, we'll tell you over on DFB as well. That's what our newsletter's for. You can go ahead and sign up for it for free down in the description of this video. Now, prices vary depending on the packages you book and the restaurants you choose, so make sure to do your research before you decide to splurge on one of these VIP treatments. 
So you never know who you might find wandering around the world showcased during your visit, but I can at least guarantee this, you will have ample opportunity to see a wide range of fan favorite Disney characters in Epcot, either by waving at them from a distance or by giving them a big old bear hug up close. So who might you possibly see out and about during your Epcot day? Well, in the past, we've seen characters like Pluto near the Creations Shop, Moana near Journey of Water, Donald Duck outside the Mexico Pavilion, Mulan is sometimes in China, Snow White's in Germany, Belle and Princess Aurora come to France, Mary Poppins and Alice in Wonderland are in the UK, Minnie in the Gazebo New World Showcase Plaza, and lots of other friends tend to pop up on a whim just to give us an extra dose of Disney magic. Not seeing Mickey walking around out in the open? Don't worry, he's never too far away. You can usually find him over at the Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival, which is located next to the Imagination Pavilion. And when the Communicore Hall opens up, there'll be a brand new Mickey and Friends meet and greet location for us to meet him in instead. Many of the characters meet and greet timeframes and locations will be listed directly on the My Disney Experience app, but some of them won't be. So keep your eyes peeled for character sightings, especially at the International Gateway, and have those autograph books out and ready to use. Okay, we've talked about drinking around the world a couple of times in this video, and look, I'm not saying you need to conduct an experiment to see if these things work or not, but I am intrigued with what I found at the Tea Caddy gift shop over in the UK pavilion during my last visit. There was a section in this shop displaying a little circular tin filled with hangover lozenges straight from Yorkshire. According to the front of the container, these drops are made with all natural glucose blended with fruits and ginseng extract for a truly welcoming pick-me-up, whatever that means. It seems that the UK Pavilion is well aware of those drinking around the world intentions that some folks have while visiting this park. And while you may want to purchase them just in case any of the alcohol you try doesn't sit well with you the next morning, please still remember to drink plenty of water and pace yourself when trying these different international spirits, because something tells me even if these lozenges do help, they're not going to be cure-all. Epcot may be a park for all ages, but there are sections of this park where that's not entirely true. Monsieur Paul in the France Pavilion and Takumi Te in the Japan Pavilion are both signature restaurants with high-end cuisine and rather steep price points. They're also both pretty fancy schmancy, meaning younger kids aren't going to be allowed to dine here. Yep, that's right. No babies, no little kids. At Monsieur Paul, you must be at least 10 years old to dine, and at Takumi Te, you must be at least eight. Restaurant guests will also be expected to wear something that, as stated on the Disney website, adheres to the restaurant's sophisticated and upscale aesthetic. So leave your bathing suits at home. No, you don't have to go out and purchase a dazzling cocktail dress or like a tuxedo or anything. But these restaurants do ask you to wear something on the more sophisticated side of things, meaning your outfit should be clean and neat and in good condition. If I'm planning on eating at one of these restaurants during my Epcot day, I usually wear a comfy sundress. That way I'm still ready for a nice meal in the evening, but my outfit isn't so stuffy that I'm gonna be miserable throughout the rest of my park day. For men, khaki shorts and a clean button-up or polo should work just fine. Nothing too outrageous, but enough to respect the signature dining culture. The setting of Disney's original animated film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, is inspired by several areas around Germany, which is why you're gonna see Snow White hanging out by the wishing well near the Germany Pavilion throughout the day. But Snow White isn't the only character from her movie hanging out around these parts. High above the merchandise inside the Volkskunst Clocks and Crafts shop, you can find Snow White's arch nemesis, that dastardly poison apple. Need help tracking it down? Just look for the wall of merch displaying all the Snow White stuff. There, you'll see it, looking down on all the guests, wondering who'll become its next victim. No, it's not going anywhere. It's under a pretty sturdy looking glass dome, so you're totally safe to walk over and take pictures. And here we are yet again exploring another slightly dated interactive experience at the exit of a classic Epcot attraction. Imageworks, the What If Labs, is a place where you can continue exploring your senses after your journey into imagination with Figment concludes. Now, anybody who's an 80s Epcot kid, the Journey into Imagination Imageworks is basically the flagship of our Epcot experience. This and Kitchen Cabaret are basically the majority of what's left of my memories of being a child. Anyway, it's changed a little bit since then. I don't have the rainbow tunnel for you anymore, but you can become a music conductor for a band of virtuoso purple dragons. You can jump across a symphony of stepping stones or even create your own little figment to email to a friend back home who's missing out on all the fun. But the main reason people visit Imageworks, even if they haven't gone on the ride just yet, is to meet and greet with popular Disney characters like Joy from Inside Out or Figment himself. 
When we're getting on Soarin' Around the World or its predecessor, Soarin' Over California, we're usually focused on our favorite parts of the ride. The smells, the sights, Patrick Warburton. Now what we might not think too terribly much about is the flight number of our supposed vehicle, but we should think about it because it's cool. The flight number, Flight 5505, represents the attraction's original Disney World opening date, May 5th, 2005. An important day indeed. Now, that greenhouse you're floating past while riding on Living with the Land isn't just for looks. This is a fully functional greenhouse that doesn't let its produce go to waste. Each year, the Land Pavilion grows nearly 30 tons of fruit and veg that are served at restaurants like Sunshine Seasons and Garden Grill, and select festival booths too. If you want a closer look at how Epcot's cast members maintain these greenhouses, consider booking a behind-the-scenes tour for a one-of-a-kind backstage experience. This is one of our favorite tours to recommend. It's inexpensive and it is so fun. Tour prices range around $39 to $45 per person on top of theme park admission and can be booked online or right outside the Living with the Land ride on the day of your visit, subject to availability. Okay, now this is seriously exciting news. The World Celebration Gardens was officially added as a Disney wedding venue at the beginning of this year. Now, can you imagine how stunning that would be? I mean, you've got the lush greenery, the synchronized lights, the glorious spaceship Earth who might threaten to outshine the bride, but I guess a little friendly competition never hurt anyone. Now, this venue is available to book for weddings in January 2025 and later, but you can learn more about it as well as other Disney venues over on the Disney Weddings website. So I am very serious about this next one. If you don't download the Play Disney Parks app for any other reason, get it just to play the DuckTales World Showcase Adventure in Epcot. This is a free scavenger hunt-like game for both the young and the young at heart to play around World Showcase. And I'm not just talking about another scavenger hunt sticker board game, though I am a fan of those too. This game is legitimately interactive and throws you into each DuckTales mission head on. You might have to trigger a duck robot in the middle of the Mitsukoshi department store, drop off a rather important golf ball at a non-disclosed UK spot, team up with a creative China Pavilion cricket, save the poor German tiny train town citizens who've now got themselves wrapped up in even more drama than before, expose the hidden sword behind Norway's waterfall. Okay, I'm getting too excited now. I don't want to give everything away. I just want to prove to you that the DuckTales World Showcase Adventure game is a great immersive way to explore the pavilions with your family without having to wait in lines to do so. So Shanghai Disneyland is like a bucket list park for me, but in the meantime, I love that Epcot's China Pavilion gives me a little sneak peek into what I can find inside this international park. Inside Shanghai Disney Resort is a self-guided tour held within the House of the Whispering Willows Gallery. Here, you're gonna be able to see exhibits that showcase all the different sections that make up Shanghai Disney through its props and artwork, models, and more. Not to mention this gallery is a super quiet place to take a breather and an AC break if you need one. Good place for baby to nap. Y'all are sleeping on how impressive the American Adventure show is at Epcot. My dad and I used to go to this like seven times a day. How can your jaw not drop to the floor when you watch animatronic Ben Franklin walk up those stairs? Imagineers are so good they scare me sometimes. But during the show, there's a little video played that tells the story of two brothers who fought on different sides of the battlefield during the Civil War. The story is nothing short of tragic, but the little Easter egg hidden here is less so. The two brothers depicted in this film are actually inspired by two former Disney Imagineers. The first is production designer John Olson, the second is Jeff Burke, who was largely responsible for the creation of Frontierland and Magic Kingdom. So now you can tell your friends and family that and sound very, very smart. So Magic Kingdom isn't the only Disney park with tunnels and stuff going on just below the surface. Epcot has tunnels too. Just one tunnel, but it's really long. 700 foot tunnel that's located partially under Spaceship Earth. This tunnel is mainly used to quickly transport deliveries to their final Epcot destinations without having to carry said deliveries throughout the entire park. And if you've been an Epcot cast member and you've been in this tunnel, please let me know because I want to know all about it. So you're not typically going to find me encouraging you to purchase pre-packaged snacks, especially when there are so many other freshly made snacks you can try around Disney property. But Epcot is going to be one of my few exceptions here. 
The gift shops across the different pavilions do not solely have cool merch you can buy. They also have interesting international snacks on their shelves, too. We've seen things ranging from gunpowder Irish gin chocolate in the UK to little dried crabs in Japan to floral flavored chips in China to marzipan snacks in Norway. And the list goes on. And the best part about purchasing these unique packaged snacks is you can always save them for later instead of having to eat them right away. Of course, I'd still be wary of the chocolate based snacks that could melt in your bag during the day. Just saying. And while you're in the UK pavilion, please pick me up a bunch of fruit gums because they are my favorite. All right, would you believe me if I told you I actually had to cut down this list in order to fit it into a single video? Of course you would. There is so much happening in Epcot. That's why I'm excited to keep on exploring this park with you and a lot more videos to come. Don't forget though, if you want to pick up our free Epcot quick guide, head over to disneyfoodblog.com slash Epcot. We're going to send it straight to your email faster than you can say freeze dried crabs. Thanks for listening everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.